Here on the Colour of Country Life Flow FM, we're speaking with Glenis Zuko. She is the Marketing Manager at Dairy Australia. Glenis, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure and we've got lots to talk about, about the benefits of the dairy product, not just the milk but the other derivatives as well. But first of all, just how much uh, milk and other dairy products are Australians consuming domestically? Yeah, well, consumption trends have really varied um, over the years. But at the moment, Australians drink on average 93 litres of milk per year. Um, so that works out to be about a cup a day. Uh, and we've really seen the trend shift back towards the, the full cream or the, the regular fat um, milk uh, in recent years, which is, is great. Uh, in terms of cheese, Australians have around 15 kilograms of cheese per year and we've seen a real um, growth in specialty cheeses in particular. And when it comes to yoghurt, they have around 9.6 kilograms a year. And what we've seen is um, people are sort of more concerned about the risks of sugar. Uh, We've seen a real uh, shift towards natural Greek and low sugar versions of yoghurt. Yep, all of those products you mentioned are popular in our fridge, uh, something that doesn't show up in our fridge. But we visit plenty of friends who are on things like the almond milk, for instance. What is the trend now towards those sort of non, I guess, non-dairy derived milk products? Yeah, we, we're definitely seeing a, a growth uh, in plant-based uh, milk consumption. Uh, around 30% of Australian adults um, do have plant-based milks, but it's only around 2% that have plant-based only. So often they're having a mix of uh, regular dairy and the plant-based alternatives. Um, but I really think it's important that uh, Australians realise that they're not a great replacement. So if you're having it for taste or other reasons, uh, that's one thing. Uh, but if you're having it because you think they're as healthy as, as regular milk, um, well, they, they really don't stack up. They don't have the same unique nutrients uh, or the health benefits that are well established with, with dairy milk. Now, Glennis, I do know in another life you're also a dietitian, and I wouldn't pretend that I'm giving professional advice here, but my doctor did say to me I needed to drink more dairy-based milk uh, as a short-term solution to a little health problem I had. What is uh, the importance of dairy product being in the diets of people of all ages? Yeah, there's so many benefits. I think the most well-known benefit is dairy growing bone health. So we need nutrients like calcium every single day, and if we don't have enough calcium-rich foods, uh, calcium gets taken for our bones to be used for other body functions. And over the time, our bones will become weak and brittle, uh, leading to a disease called osteoporosis. So dairy is the highest and richest source of calcium in the diet. And it's a form that's really well absorbed by the bones. So it's important to have dairy right throughout your life. During childhood, our bones are growing really rapidly. So it's a window of opportunity to lay down as much bone density as possible to see us through to old age. Uh, but, and then when you hit your 20s, you can't actually build any more bones, but you need to maintain what you have as you start to lose bone density. So having adequate dairy at all points of life is really important um, to to prevent uh, poor bone health and osteoporosis. But the benefits don't stop there. So milk, cheese and yogurt have been associated with a reduced risk of heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, some cancers and also type 2 diabetes. Yeah, that's the one I was. I think that was getting at what well, my doctor was getting at, some of those latter ones rather than bone health. I have noticed, and certainly in our own family, more people uh, reaching for the lactose-free at the supermarket. Um, are you seeing that in those consumer trends? And also, are they sort of something that... Uh, how do you reintroduce... You say people are going back onto full cream milk. Are there people that are realising, well, I've gone lactose-free for a while, I'm going to try and reintroduce? Yeah, definitely. So... I think what we were seeing a couple of years ago is that real heightened awareness of intolerances and to an extent some self-diagnosis. But the good news is with with, uh, dairy and lactose is that you can build up that lactose tolerance. um, But also, even if you do have lactose intolerance, you don't have to be dairy-free. So having uh, smaller amounts of, say, milk over the day and with other foods can help with that tolerance. Um, There's also lactose. Um, free dairy milks available but also products like cheese it's virtually hard cheeses in particular they're virtually lactose free and things like yogurt the probiotics in in the yogurt helps sort of pre-digest the lactose 
so that it's generally really well tolerated even for people with lactose intolerance. So I just suggest to people to to trial a few different strategies rather than avoiding it or limiting it altogether. Good points. We might look at what we're buying for the fridge very soon at our place. Uh, when it comes to, I don't know, for our dairy farmers, they'd be keen for Australians to consume as much dairy as possible. Uh, what is Dairy Australia promoting in terms of uh, the benefits of dairy and how we can increase consumption in Australia? Absolutely. I think one of the big reasons Australians are not having enough, and in fact, eight in 10 adults don't have enough dairy foods um, each day. I think a big reason is because they don't realise how much they need. Uh, So it's not just sort of a splash of milk in the tea or on the cereal. Um, A serve of dairy is a cup of milk, uh, a tub of yogurt, which is about three quarters of a cup, or two slices of cheese. And the amount of serves you need varies over your lifetime. So For kids, it might start at 1.5 serves a day and go up to 3.5 in their teenage years. Most adults need two and a half serves a day. And then women over 50 and men over 70, they need to increase it to four serves a day. Uh, And that's because they start to increase uh, their bone loss at those ages. So really thinking about um, those moments throughout the day um, where you can include dairy. And the beauty of it is it's so flexible. So and it partners really well with other healthy foods. So at breakfast, whether it's you know yogurt and fruit or milk with the cereal or porridge, uh, lunch, it's cheese with the sandwich or on salads, for example. A tub of yogurt is one of the healthiest and most convenient snacks during the day. Uh, and at dinner time, you know, dairy is super easy to get in, particularly um, trying other cheeses like parmesan, say on the pasta, for example. Yeah, in our um, local supermarket, I live in the Barossa, there is a gigantic range of uh, different dairy products, including cheeses. Uh, but sometimes when you put out the uh, the blue vein or the uh, camembert for a special occasion, people talk about it as a guilty pleasure. Is, is it something that we can be saying is for health benefits or you do need to be cautious how much you're having? Oh, look, it's absolutely something you should feel really good about. So even your, your regular fat cheeses have been associated with um, with the health benefits that we mentioned before. So positive health outcomes for your heart, for your bones and things like type 2 diabetes. So you should definitely not feel bad about including them. And I see, you know, if you're going to sit down and have something that you really enjoy, I'd rather it be a beautiful piece of cheese rather than something like some um, cake or or lollies or chocolate, which have, you know, no nutritional value. So I think having having a cheese platter each week is is a great way to to do something good for your health and, you know, good for your mind. (laughs) You beauty, I'll be heading straight to the supermarket as soon as I knock off. Uh, Lastly, just how is the dairy industry being perceived in Australia? And uh, look, how, how are you marketing or promoting the industry's image? Yeah, well, the great news is that uh, trust in the Australian dairy industry has actually never been stronger. Um, so our, our tracking has shown that, um, you know, 76% of Australians uh, trust the industry. And, you know, in an environment where um, companies are often not well trusted, I, I think that's fantastic news. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with um, really demonstrating our commitment to sustainability. So the dairy industry has had a sustainability framework for over 10 years now. We were the first globally in the agricultural sector to have a uh, sustainability framework. And it's really about making sure we're making progress and demonstrating our commitments to areas like environmental sustainability, uh, caring for our animals, uh, human health, um, and also the livelihoods of the people that we we employ. So we've been you know, really investing in those spaces. And I think the expectation um, from consumers at the moment is particularly in that area of environment. So people want to make sure that their food um, is, you know, really considering climate change uh, and making choices that they can feel good about. And, you know, I think they can rest assured that dairy, you know, acknowledges that um, we need to make progress and we are making progress. So I think that's one of the areas that we're really focusing on. Plenty to feel positive about when you're having your cheese or pouring your milk on your cereal. Uh, Glenna Zuko from Dairy Australia, thanks so much for joining us and filling us in on the details. We look forward to another chat with Dairy Australia soon. Fantastic. Thank you.